Since the development of the Westbury Field in 1996, a number of changes have been made to the subsea infrastructure to increase production and improve long-term reliability of the Westbury system. In 2010 and 2011, a drilling program took place to convert the remaining redundant water injection well into the W10 production well. Due to a lack of available production slots on the manifold, this new well was tied back to the manifold via two new commingling T-pieces, one for production and one for gas lift, such that production from both W7Z and W10 share a single slot. Recent production test data has indicated that this reconfiguration has generated increased back pressure at the two wells, resulting in suboptimal production. The Marathon Oil Westbury Subsea Well Extension Project aims to sidetrack drilling at well W2, followed by drilling and completion of a new well, currently designated W11, at the Westbury Drill Centre. The lack of available slots for the new well at the existing Westbury manifold means that a new manifold is required to be installed and daisy-chained to the existing one. This new extension manifold will also provide an opportunity to de-bottleneck W7Z and W10, optimising production. The plan is to place a contract award with a fabricator for the manifold, as well as subcontracts for the spring lock system that's to be incorporated into manifolds, and then looking into the various phases of uh, offshore campaigns um, with that install in March 2015. With a project of this size, it is crucial that TechNIP do all they can to minimise risk. In order to ensure that the installation runs without any problems, a number of trials take place to ensure any challenges that may be encountered are addressed prior to the scheduled installation. It gives us a good guide as to uh, the engineering practices that we've put into, uh, and into an actual application phase to make sure that it's uh, correct for the job and it's going to work well offshore. The spring lock trials consisted of the setup of the, the bottom section of the spring lock. So it's, uh, pretty good indicator that the pile is secured and locked in place. So having successfully completed the trials, the team are now ready to uh, proceed with the next six months phase of the project, which is going to be the key fabrication of the structures. The fabrication of the manifold has been without any major problems. Now, all of the equipment must be loaded onto the well servicer in preparation for the journey out to Westbury. The well servicer is a versatile multi-role vessel that combines heavy lift capability with diver or diverless support, ideal for this project. I think in terms of the suitability um, to carry out the job, the well servicer was the best uh, vessel uh, to carry out that task. We got the crane installed about 12 months ago. It's a 200 tonne safe working load crane, which we could easily uh, install this manifold of 120 tonnes. This phase of the project is vitally important that the team work um, safely, efficiently 
and um, on time to make sure that we uh, can progress to the latter stages of the project. The team worked to meet the scheduled departure time of 1 a.m. on the 18th of March. Fortunately, everything is boarded ahead of schedule and the departure time is brought forward. At 1.42 on the 17th of March, the well servicer begins her journey, a whole day ahead of schedule. After a 14-hour journey, the well servicer reaches its destination, 142 nautical miles northeast off the coast of Aberdeen. With a small window of suitable weather conditions, the crew are against the clock to complete the installation before the bad weather closes in. But before the manifold is overboarded, our revisa are required to scan the seabed for small pieces of debris and adjust sandbags if needed. With the seabed prepped, the lifting of the manifold can begin. Over 122 tons of welded steel is crane lifted off the deck. Ballasts are filled with water portside to help balance the boat. This is the most dangerous stage of the project. The manifold is overboarded until the crane is 90 degrees from the vessel. Once at this angle, it can be lowered into the sea. At a depth of 30 metres, the crane slews forward to allow slack in orientation rigging. The ROV retrieves orientation rigging from clump weight and attaches to the manifold rigging using the ROV hook. The heading of the well servicer is adjusted to suit approach and installation heading. The manifold 
is lowered into position with the guidance of the ROVs. They are positioned to check that the positioning is within tolerance before disconnecting the rigging. The next phase of the project is to overboard the piles and lower them onto the pile guides on the manifold. Each pile is 22.5 metres long and 9 tonnes in weight. For the installation of the piles it's a little bit more challenging because we're working in drill rig anchor patterns and because the piles are effectively tubular. We have to overboard them 140 metres away from any subsea assets. So what we're doing is we're lifting them clear uh, at 20, 20 degrees for, for deployment through the splash zone. We'll lower them to depth, get into position near to the manifold installation location and upend them on, uh, on a winch. We'll transfer the load to the winch basically and this, this causes the fall away rigging to, to fall clear at the bottom of the pile and leaves the pile in a vertical orientation. Then we'll uh, transfer the load back onto the crane and basically get into position for stabbing into the manifold. Using only the skill of the team and precision of the crane operator, the piles must be guided into a space that is just over 67 centimetres wide at a depth of 107 metres. Fighting against the currents of the North Sea and with limited visibility, this is no easy task. Each pile takes an average of two hours to install. As the final pile is secured in place, the crew prepare to overboard the piling hammer, a 40-ton hammer that will drive each of the piles into the seabed, securing the manifold in place. The hammer weighs 40.5 tons, so it's quite, it's quite a big hammer. And what we'll do is we'll upend that on the frame, lift it overboard, deploy it to the pile and basically stab it in. The crane operator must lower the piling hammer and once again aim to secure it in a space only 61 centimetres wide at the top of the pile. Once mated, the weight of the hammer forces the piles into the seabed. Then, once in operation, the hammer drives the pile further into the seabed until the pile is 500 millimetres above the top of the pile's sleeve. With all four piles secured in place, the manifold must now be daisy-chained to the existing manifold. We had a special pallet manufactured and we coiled it such that you could remove two-thirds of it, lay in one direction, and then a third to lay in the other direction. And that meant that we could overcome the problem of the water depth versus the length of the pipe. The tie-in at the W11 tree was done um, Using torque tools, we tied in at the extension manifold with tensioning equipment. Following on from that, rigid spools needed to be installed. And they were installed again using divers and lifted in individually via the crane. With the installation of the new manifold complete, the back pressure has been reduced and production has been optimised. The project has been a massive success. On completion of the project, it's been very successful. The client's very happy uh, that the manifold went in very safely. We got it right the first time. We've had uh, no major incidents on the project at all. It's been delivered on budget, we've delivered it on time, and um, we can consider the project a success as a team.